we're ready. Good morning, church. Oh, you all are still asleep, aren't you? You got that extra hour of sleep and you're still in the dozy tire. Let's try this again. Good morning, church. So welcome to Lake Hills United Methodist Church. Uh, what a beautiful fall morning it is. And you may notice things look a little more formal today. You are at the contemporary service, I promise. But uh, today we are observing All Saints Sunday. And I will go into that a little further, what that means. But it's a very special day in the life of our church. So you're going to hear and see a little more formal detail contemporary service, um, just because it is such a special day. For all of you the, who are watching this online, we welcome you as well. If you will just take a moment and in the chat section, if you'll just write a note saying, hey, give us your name or write good morning, whatever it is you want. That way we know that you are here. You can put in prayer requests in that chat section. You can comment about the sermon. Nice comments, please. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but not send up prayer requests. Just use that as a time to interact with Carrie, who is um, on her tablet watching this and is able to speak with you as well. If you are here in the sanctuary with us, if you will take just a moment and take the little attendance folders at the end of each pew, fill those out and pass it down. That way we have a record that you are here. So... Let us now begin to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls for worship as we sing our first praise song this morning.
So you see Lois lighting candles. There's a special reason for that. During this month, we are talking about, and you can have a seat. We are talking about what it means to have stewardship, for Christian stewardship. And I know that can sometimes be a word that has bad connotations, right? So we're looking at it this, this week and the next couple of weeks. And so these candles are to help us to open our eyes. So for us to come out of any avoidance we have, to look at the feelings we have about how we serve God and the church through our talents, our times, and even our money. So we light these candles um, and ask God to illumine ourselves, to be with us on this journey even more let us feel God more than we ever have, giving us fresh perspectives that will shift any boulders out of the way on this journey that holds us back from having a courageous vision of what God is calling us to do and that we also can be able to have compassion for ourselves and each other because I know these, these journeys aren't always the easiest to navigate, right? But the relationship of serving God is as much as our faith as anything. And Jesus talks about that throughout scripture. We see this flame is to affirm that where there is light, there is understanding. Where there is understanding, there is compassion. Where there is probability, there is possibility. And through all of that, through the power of the Holy Spirit, there is transformation. Will you pray with me, please? Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. You are our Redeemer. You are the beginning and the ending of all things. You have promised to wipe away every tear that death and mourning will be no more. And you have made your home among us and you abide with us as our God. And oh, we say thank you, God. We praise your name. Lord, teach us to live as the saints you have called us to be. Teach us to live as the church you call us to be so that we can truly be your people, living and doing your will. Because God, we say it and we have to embrace it and we just ask forgiveness for all the times we have it. Not our will, Lord, but yours. God, many in our community are hurting today. May they feel your presence stronger than they ever have in your life. May they feel you wrapped around them like a warm, comfortable blanket, rocking them back and forth as only a true parent can rock a child. And Lord, show us how to be your hands, your heart, and your feet in this broken world. Because, yes, we are broken people in a broken world, but you make all things whole. But you need us to be a part of that process. So, Lord, we come before you now saying, here I am, Lord. All that I have, all that I am is for you. Because of you, I am free. I have eternal life and I am loved. We lift all of this and more in the beautiful name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Let's continue our worship in song. You can stand as able. You can sit in whatever you feel God calling you to do. Oh my 
some members that are here today to help us during our children's time of wonder. If you will all come forward, do we have anybody present today that was born between 1925 and 1945? <laughs> well, I need one person who is that age. If they'll sit right here. Then the next, this is called the greatest generation. We have the silent generation because they were raised during a period of war and economic depression. Anybody believe Louise is part of the silent generation? Okay, anyway. Then we have uh, the baby boomers, 46 to 64. Then, whoops, over here we have Generation Y, which is 78. I'm sorry, Generation X. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So then we have generation Y, 78 to 90. We have generation Z, which is 95 to 2007. And Carolyn, you're going to be our, our children. Or, I'm sorry, Eve, you're going to be our children. I, I'm still working out the extra hours of sleep. So look at all the generations that we have represented here, right? But did you notice there's an empty chair on either side, right? Why do you think we have those? Right, the ones right here next to Carolyn are for the saints that have gone on before. Then we have all the saints that are present right now because in the Methodist church, we believe all who embody and, and are the act as Christ and live as Christ and love God are saints. Now, next to Eve, who is our child, right? We have another empty chair. Who's, what do you think that empty chair is about? The future saints. That's right. These are the people that are going to be coming up, learning about God learning how to be Jesus, learning how to listen to the Holy Spirit. They haven't been born yet, but they're still already part of God's promises and love. Now, what's important for all of you sitting in this chair, all of you out there, anybody who's watching online, we remember the people of this empty chair, right? But do we always think about the people in the other chair? Right? Sometimes we all think just, well, living like Jesus, being the church is all about the here and now. That empty chair is important because that chair represents those who's going to continue taking this church into the community, being Jesus with skin on. Okay. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, you give us many people to share God's love. Lord, be with every person today. Whether young, or old. whether young or old, and be with us today, and be with us today. As, we as we remember and honor all saints, how you love them, and how you love us. We pray this in Jesus' name, because Jesus, Jesus is just so awesome. Amen. Okay, you all can go to your seat. We've now come to that time, but I'm going to let you read the scripture passage first, and then we'll do our All Saints Remembrance. I just feel like God's saying we need to do it that way. <clears throat> our scripture reading comes from Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them, and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how terrible that the darkness will be. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Thanks be to God. We've now come to that time in our service where we will be observing the saints that have gone before. And, you know, we human beings like to think that we are who we are, right? Because we've worked hard to make ourselves that way. 
Um, Frank Sinatra sings it, right? In that song, I did it my way. And you'd be surprised how many people want that song at their service, at their funeral or their memorial service. And it's sometimes just hard to remember that we interact and we're interrelated with so many people. And if we're really honest, you know, we have to admit that who we are as human beings, we owe to so many people, especially in the church, because the church is this huge community, not just here, but every church in this area, every church in the state, nation, just all of God's people. And so we are truly, truly surrounded every day by a great cloud of witnesses, people that we call saints. Now, as I mentioned earlier, yes, in the United Methodist Church, we believe in saints, but not in the same manner as like the Roman Catholic Church. We do recognize that like Matthew and Paul, John and Luke, other early followers of Jesus, we call them saints. And there's numerous United Methodist churches named after them. But we also call regular people just like all of you, people like me, Natalie, uh, Lois, we call them saints as well because we are to exemplify the life of Christ. And so in this sense, every Christian is considered a saint. In fact, Ephesians 2.18 tells us, For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. So today on All Saints Sunday, we are going to give thanks for that great cloud of witnesses who have gone on before us and who have shaped us into the people of faith that we are today. Assisting me today is Pastor Lee Sweet. He, Lee Short, see, and I'm horrible with names. And um, he was here yesterday to help officiate a memorial service for Richard Lewis. And we are honored to have him here to help us as well with All Saints Days. So I will, we will near, uh, now call the lives of those from our church who have gone on before us in this past year. Their names will be spoken aloud, a bell will be rung, and a candle lit in their memory. And we're especially going to give God thanks for having shared them with us. If you are one of the family members of the people's name, we call. If you will come forward, when we call their name, it's in alphabetical order so you can kind of anticipate. If you have lost a loved one at any other time in your life, you will be able to come and light other candles um, when you come forward for communion later in the service. So again, when we call your loved one's name, please come forward to light a candle in their memory and just say, present. Jim Avery Fan Bitten Michael Boggs Johnny J.J. J. Giles Mildred Goots Mary Alice Henry Richard Lewis <coughs> Antonio Tony Caseda Nancy Ross Nick Smith Cindy Stein
Tom Walton. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the saints who have ever worshipped you, whether under a tree or in cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses, where your name was lifted and adored no matter the location. We give you thanks, God, for hands that have been lifted in praise, manicured hands, hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands, or those wrinkled with age, all holy hands used as wave offerings across your land. We thank you now, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suits. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. And may we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Gracious God, as your word is proclaimed, and as we listen, to you speak to us through them. May we hear exactly what it is you wish us to take away from here today so that we walk even more so as your saints. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So two Sundays ago, David and I were in my hometown, Art Kansas City, Kansas, little bitty farming town you've heard me talk about a lot. Um, the town had been celebrating their 150th birthday, and I had the humble honor of preaching in the church where I grew up. And that word humble or humbling, oh, that's the key word there. I tell you what. Now, I don't have a problem speaking in public. I think all of you probably know that, right? Even though they did tell David there when I was growing up, I was one of the most silent people they had ever heard. He just looked at them like, okay, yeah. Um, and I love preaching. I love talking. I love proclaiming God's word. But I tell you what, I was intimidated that day. You see, I was walking into where I had grown up, right? I didn't know who was going to be there, if they remembered me, what they remembered of me, and so on. Then I was approached by this woman. Her name is Jerry Wolf. She was my first grade Sunday school teacher 18 years ago. Okay, fine, 53 years ago. She also reminded me that for our class that year, she had been teacher number four because the other teachers had been ran off. I started sweating bullets. I'm thinking, oh man, I don't remember this. I barely remembered her. What did I do? And then she told me, oh, it wasn't you girls that were the problem. It was those three boys, but they weren't going to scare me away. Talk about a sigh of relief, because I was so glad to know I had not made a negative impression on this precious woman. So through this month of November, we're using examples from the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life, for this sermon series, It's a Wonderful, F-U-L-L, Life. And in that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, the main character, George Bailey, I mean, he just, he's this super guy. He's nice, he's loving, and he has all these grand plans of making a name for himself in the world. He wants people to see just how successful he is. But as it often happens, things don't work out, right? His world crashes down around him, and he begins to think maybe he should just end his life. So God sends Clarence the angel, and Clarence the Angel decides partway through the movie, the best thing to do is to help George see what the world would be like, how his life has made a difference, and what it would have been like if he had never been born. Watch this music, movie clip.
strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. And when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? Well, I've heard of things like this. You've got me in some kind of a spell or something. Well, I'm going to get out of it. I'll get out of it. But I know how, too. I... Now, the last man I talked to before all this stuff started happening to me was Martini. You know where he lives? Well, sure I know where he lives. He lives in Bailey Park. Are you sure this is Bailey Park? No, I'm not sure of anything anymore. All I know is this should be Bailey Park. But where are the houses? You are here to build them. Your brother, Harry Bailey, broke through the ice and was drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie. Harry Bailey went to war. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. So, do any of you recognize this building that's going to pop up? Some of you might, some of you might not, right? This was one of the first Lake Hills United Methodist Church buildings. But it was the building, of course, before this one, right, where you're sitting. But this wasn't the first building of the church. The first worship sever, service ever held was on June 14, 1956. It was in a tent, the corner of 10th Street and Avenue J, just right down the road. Right. It was actually an outreach of Bandera Methodist Church, and I love it. The sermon title that day was What It Means to Follow Jesus. There were 31 people in attendance. The offering was $14.14. And get this, they organized Sunday school classes right there on that day. 49 days later, not even a full two months, 49 days later, the Medina Lake Methodist Church was organized with 23 charter members. You see, those 23 people were living into the dreams and the visions that God was giving them. And because of that, now Lake Hills United Methodist Church, where you all are sitting, you all who are watching online, are watching this worship, this church was born. Think about that. You are here today because a group of 23 people, 23 saints, listened to God, stepped out in faith in 1956, grew a church so people could learn about Jesus and understand what it means to have a wonderful life. Now think about this. How different might life have been for any of you today if it wasn't for those 23 people 65 years ago creating this church? And as I was writing the sermon, all I could do was keep giving thanks to God that those 23 people were putting God first, not themselves first, because I have planted churches and it is not easy. They put God first. And that just is amazing. And that is something to say thank you, God, for. Because let's be honest, we all probably have or have had moments where we're like George Bailey and it's a wonderful life. We want to put ourselves first. We want personal recognition for being the best. Look at me. woo Right? In fact, being the best is so important in our world that there is an organization known as the Guinness Book of World Records. Did you know it receives 50,000 record applications a year? That's 1,000 applications a week, people wanting to be the best. For instance, right here in Texas, Jackie Bibby, anybody heard his name? He's known as the Texas Snake Man. He holds no less than five Guinness World Records. And he didn't come by those records easily. It's cost him a leg and a finger. Here's what he's done. He has spent 45 minutes in a see-through bathtub with 195 rattlesnakes to set a Guinness World Record. What? Oh, and it wasn't the first time. He did that after setting it already the first time as a world record, but he wanted to do it with 12 more snakes. So the first time, 183, then 195. For another record, he crawled headfirst into a sleeping bag with 24 rattlesnakes in it. 
this one is really just like, ooh, ooh, heebie-jeebies. He's held the most rattlesnakes in his mouth ever recorded, 13. And I have one thing to say, why? Right? Why in the world would a person do that? I mean, personally, I believe if the good Lord intended it for us to handle snakes, he would have put a handle on them so we could carry them. Okay? I just, I am not a snake person. Every time I have a blessing of the animals, I pray someone doesn't bring a snake because that's going to be testing my faith to lay hands. I'm just saying. You see, there are all kinds of world records. A man in Spain held his breath underwater for 24 minutes 34 and 3.45 seconds. 24 minutes. Guess what? There's even a Guinness World Record for preaching. So you all who ever thought my sermons are too long, I'm a slacker compared to this guy. The world record for the longest sermon occurred seven years ago, actually today. Seven years ago today, his name was Pastor Zach Zinder. He's in Mount Dora, Florida. And beginning on Friday, November the 7th, 2014, he delivered, here, hold on, 53 hours, 18 minute long sermon. 200 pages of notes, more than 600 PowerPoint slides. I love this next part when I read about it. He used a water gun to squirt people if they were beginning to fall asleep in the pews. <laughs> but the next part's even better. He also had water guns placed strategically around the sanctuary so people in the congregation could squirt him if he began to nod off. It's like, I love it. And I kept thinking, you know, today's the seventh anniversary of that record. Let's try to beat it. What do you think? Somebody's going, no. Okay, I get it. Because we got pancakes and sausage in a little bit, right? Okay. No water guns, too, right. You know, here's the thing about all of that. The headlines of today become the footnotes of tomorrow. Eventually, there's going to be someone else who's going to descend into a snake pit to outsit the snake-sitting record, and it's not going to be me. Someone's going to beat the underwater breath-holding record. And you just know that someday somebody's going to step behind a pulpit to preach on and on and on in quest of the world's longest sermon. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Being the best, having the most, it's been around for centuries, even in Jesus' time. And that's what Jesus is talking about in the scripture passage that Lois read earlier today. Today's passage from Matthew is part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is telling the people who are gathered there to listen to him that they should stop collecting those precious material treasures on earth for their own benefit and instead collect treasures in heaven. Now that sounds a lot like Jesus is saying we're supposed to be making a name for ourselves with God, right? That God will go down and go, oh, my precious child, you are the best Christian ever. You know, like, woohoo, I'm going to score those brownie points with God. So then when I get to heaven, I'm going to live in the best mansion, in the best neighborhood. I'm going to live right next door to God. That's not what Jesus is saying at all. Jesus is not saying, hey, don't worry about this life. Get ready for the next. Instead, when Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven, the heaven he is speaking of is God's kingdom right here on earth. You know, like what we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the treasure we're to store up is Christ. You see, we're to treasure the Lord Jesus most of all before anything, anyone, even ourselves. Because when Jesus is truly our treasure, we then commit our resources, our time, our money, our talents to Jesus' work in this world. We store up treasure in heaven by being the church that God needs. A church that demonstrates the greatest of all sacrifices that God ever made for us. But guess what? Sometimes that means we also have to sacrifice. Sometimes it means we must give even if it's scary. We must give up our own personal desires. Sometimes it means we even have to give up how we personally want things done. Because all of that is about control. And control is about greed. And if it's about greed, then it means we're putting ourselves first and foremost as the treasure and not Jesus. So look around you for a minute. Do you see any empty seats? One or two, right? I'm going to tell you, God is so happy you're sitting here this morning. But God is also worried and saddened by these empty seats because it means there are still people who do not yet have a relationship with God. And we've talked about this before. In a 2.5 mile radius, 62% of the people around us don't 
belong to any faith community. That's why God says that we as individuals, we as a church, we're to be like the shepherd who leaves the 99 sheep where they are to go and look for that one lost sheep. It's called making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But when we do that, we can't make church about what we want because we want recognition and control. We want that big C on our chest that I'm super Christian. It's not about being a church that makes us comfortable. It's not about being a church that's always doing things the way we've always done them because that's how church is always done. We've never heard that, right? But instead, we are supposed to be saying as we pray, okay, God, I am giving back to you the blessings you have given me. Use them, Lord. And then, God, give me that courage. Give me that strength. Send me to find the person that is supposed to be sitting in this pew next to me. Then after that, send me to find the next one. And the one after that. And the one after that. And it continues. That's why in today's scripture passage, Jesus goes from kind of being a spiritual counselor by telling us to lay up treasures in heaven. Then he becomes, you're going to love this, an ophthalmologist. Right? Because there's a passage in there he talks about saying the eye is the lamp of the body. Basically, Jesus is saying that old time honored quote the eyes are the windows of the soul. You see, what we look at is most important in our lives, what we want our lives to show others, what our main focus is, whether as a Christian or as a member of Lake Hills United Methodist Church. Well, all of that boils down to what is our treasure? Where do we store those treasures? How do we use those treasures? All those things show the condition of our souls. And here's the thing. Jesus is not so much concerned with what you have. Jesus is concerned with how you see what you have. Did you hear that? What you see what you have. Because how you see what you have is going to determine not only what you do with it, but also determines what it does to you. Hmm. In today's scripture passage, Jesus is telling us to focus on our motives, to look within ourselves, to look at the why behind our actions, to look at the amount of love we put into serving God. Because as Jesus said in today's passage, we cannot serve two masters. We cannot make God and ourselves a priority. It's got to be one or the other. It does not work to have both. That's why God is calling all of us to live into an incarnational faith, to be the hands, the feet, the words, and the heart of Jesus in our communities because that community out there is our church. The people around this neighborhood are the congregation. So in that classic holiday film, It's a Wonderful Life, you heard Clarence the Angel trying to remind George that he he is needed. He's making an impact. And you hear Clarence tell George, strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. In fact, Mother Teresa once said, we ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean. But if the drop was not in the ocean, the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. It is not the magnitude of our actions, but the amount of love that is put into the actions that matters. That is what we remember and celebrate today on All Saints Sunday. Each person remembered today has touched the lives of others. And today we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. We stand on the shoulders of all who have prayed, who have worshipped, who have given of their time and talents to love others, and who have reached out to others in ways that go far beyond what we can see. And someday, if we are following Jesus, someday someone's going to say they stand on our shoulders, and they're going to call us the saints that have gone on before. It is now our time. For each and every one of us, the living saints here at Lake Hills United Methodist Church, to recognize that our lives are much more than individual selves. It is now our turn, 
like those 23 saints 65 years ago. It's our turn to keep preparing the way, to let God use all of us, ourselves, our gifts, our times, our service, to give of ourselves, give this church fully to God so that our children, our grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbors, the children who tend the school down FM 1283, the families of those children, the people in our communities and in our subdivisions, the people we know by name, the people who are yet strangers to us, also they can learn who God is. Because you see, when we offer ourselves to God through acts of self-giving and sacrifice, we join the company of saints because we are answering God's call in our lives to give ourselves for others. Jesus is asking us, do to others as God has already done for you. It's not so you can become a saint. It's because you already are one. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have entrusted us with such an important task, that you call us to be your church, to be saints that love and exemplify and be you into this world and community. Forgive us when we have not done this. Strengthen us and give us the courage to do so. We pray this now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. O Lord of hosts, we marvel at your faithfulness. You keep your promise to remain with us by your Holy Spirit. Empower us to share the good news of your abiding presence with our neighbors and our friends. Accept our offerings, building up this community of faith so that we may serve others with the love of Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. communion is going to be just a little different today. We're actually going to be doing a communion liturgy rather than me just talking. There will be parts that you will participate with. If you will watch on the screen, you will see them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and David, Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, God. And then he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took a cup and he filled it. And he again gave thanks to you, God. And then he passed that cup around to his disciples, saying, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, God, we offer ourselves now in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim that amazing mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all who are gathered here, whether in person or watching online, and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, God, those whom we name in our hearts before you, and those whose names were called out today. And since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Lord, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, God, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now let us pray together that prayer that Jesus taught the disciples so many years ago and that have been said by saints for centuries. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you come forward for communion, you do have the opportunity to light one of the candles here for the saints that you are remembering today. And Pastor Lee, if you will help us with this, that would be wonderful. This communion table is open to everybody. Okay? It does not belong to Lake Hills United Methodist Church. It doesn't belong to the United Methodist Church. It belongs to Jesus. Jesus dines with everybody. Jesus wants to eat with you today. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to have gone through certain classes, be a member. None of that. You just have to love Jesus. You just have to want to be one of God's saints. So you'll be able to come as the Spirit leads you. If you are watching online, you will see Lois and I coming, going off screen because we're going to be down at the end of the cross to do communion. But come as the Spirit leads you.
Taking my sin, I cross my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. represent all have been your light in this world. Remind us that the torch has passed to us here to carry your light into the world because it will pierce even the darkest of situations. We thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now if we'll sing our final song of praise. Um, just a couple of announcements. We are still taking donations for the Thanksgiving baskets through Hill Country Daily Bread. Um, we've been asked to provide, in addition to a donation, 400 uh, things of rolls. And so we, it's kind of hard to keep 400 packages of rolls, right? Good. So we're taking up donations, and then that money will be given to Hill Country Daily Bread to buy them. You can mark that on your 
check or when you do it online, that that's what you want that to go to. Um, Church, you did fantastic in October, first October. I tell you what, 750 pairs of socks are going to be going to the children at Hill Country Elementary School. There are going to be some warm feet and warm hearts because you were Jesus with skin on. You rocked it, I tell you what. Let us now stand as able and we will sing our final song of praise. And if you are here for the first time after the service, we have a delicious breakfast next door. Today is the men's cooking day. And I know they got pancakes and sausage and who knows what else, but please join us. Great food, hot coffee, and wonderful conversation with your community. I search the world. Treasures of faith are never enough, and you came alone and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's 
have a blessed week.